Hello everybody, how y'all doing? Mimi's here. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about something that I really, really like. There's a lot of things I like in this world, but today I choose to talk about books. This video is not just gonna be about any books. It's going to be about my top 10 unforgettable books of all time. So over the years, I have read quite a couple of number of books. Well, it wasn't really a lot, you know maybe like below 200 or something and even in that 200 ish book i found myself like sometimes loving this book and then hating this book and it's just like you know there are always seems to be like those two combination that is persistent in my book reading but then there'll also be a time where i read something the first time and then the book was just super amazing that I just simply couldn't forget about it. So today I'm just going to talk about that. When I say unforgettable, um, naturally I would want to say more about that. So even though I say my video is going to be about my top 10 lists of unforgettable books, I think I can only manage to do just one book review. So sorry about that. But to start things off, I'm just going to talk to you about you know my usual uh, book preferences I guess so usually I have this very very simple rules in order to pick a book first of all I don't care what kind of genre it is it could be mystery it could be horror you know romance I don't really care as long as it is a book I'm okay with it and then number two the book needs to have a very very interesting synopsis like the premise it's, uh, for the book itself must be good in order for me to read it. So I, I usually gravitated towards books that's, you know, that is weird and for me I feel like interesting or never been done before. Um, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way if they found a book and then they read the synopsis and then they found something they like inside of that synopsis and they feel like, okay, I can give this book a go. We'll see how it goes. So synopsis is very important to me. And then last but not least, the book must have a little bit of element of surprise. Cause I hate it if the book is just like, just from reading the synopsis, you can feel, oh, this is not gonna end well, or yeah, um, I think it's going to happen this way. And then thing happened that way. And you'll be like, I wouldn't read predictable books is what I wanted to say. Uh, I usually like the element of surprise, I like twisted ending books, I like, you know, books that just mainly make me feel surprised, like, oh, I didn't see it coming, or something like that. I like that kind of book, so that's like uh, my main rules of selecting book, picking a book. I don't know about other people out there, but that's mine. So let's jump into the first unforgettable book on my list. This book is, was published back in 1963 by an author named John Balls and this book is his first debut and it was, you know, it was pretty popular I guess back then like it, it sell out very, very fast it's like one of the most, I think I read it somewhere that it was, this was one of the most highest um, debut books ever paid for an author at that time I guess so I really like the sound of that and yeah the book title is called The Collector oh my god there's a chicken out there sorry about that I cannot stop the chicken moving on to this thing so um, The Collector tells a story about um, two people Frederick Clegg and Miranda Gray um, and the setting is in somewhere around London I guess it was set ba back in 1960s and it tells a story about this young man named Frederick Clegg who works as a bank clerk and then we ha also have this very beautiful art student named Miranda Gray the story kicks off when Frederick start talking about Miranda Gray, the art student that she, uh, he saw not very long ago 
and he begins to talk about his admiration of her like yeah, I mean it's clearly shown there you know by by his words in the first few paragraphs that he was kind of like into Miranda like pretty much infatuated with her and and then it's revealed that you know that um, Frederick has been pretty much stalking Miranda for you know a couple of months at least and at the beginning of the story it didn't really accumulate to anything like you know it's just a fascination he just like really drawn into her and pretty much a little bit stalking her in a way but she doesn't know anything about that so the story quickly picks up its pace once uh, Frederick Plagg won a football lottery and he won quite a substantial amount of money and with that money he quits his job he bought himself a house and then gives some of the money to her his aunt or something and then um, he started living in the big house all by himself so since he quit his job he can pretty much um, focus on his hobbies now which is to collect a butterfly out of all things he really likes butterflies and he collected them but the story get much crazier afterwards once Frederick decided that he felt quite lonely at the house all alone and he just keep on missing Miranda so he really wants to be with her and so he began to hatch a plan in order to take her away with him yes you probably have guessed it he decided to kidnap her so that's pretty much of the you know the beginning of the book it started pretty I think innocently if not a little bit disturbing um, you know when we talk about that stalking part it's pretty innocent because you know he likes her he, he he wants to approach her but he didn't know why so yeah he settles on kidnapping her which is I I don't know why but I don't find that a little bit slightest disturbing at the time because you know I wasn't like deep into the book just yet but then the story gets a little bit interesting mainly when a young man kidnap a young woman you know what's bound to happen right yes we know what's bound to happen but it wasn't exactly the case with this guy for some odd reason Frederick wasn't really interested with doing stuff to Miranda he was just like keeping her in his cellar and basically just stare at her all day long if he could and I found it like a little bit unrealistic you know considering that I don't think there's anything wrong with Frederick you know as far as men as, as far as we were talking about men here I don't think that there's anything wrong with him it's just that he wouldn't touch her he wouldn't do anything to her he just like watches her and that's pretty much it to be honest with you when I first read this book I just I just wanted to root them to be together like I wanted to root Frederick and Miranda together I want them to be together because it have this potential of becoming this romance if not a little bit of Stockholm love stories you know and it have all the potentials but for some reason it just never happened that way I guess initially Frederick planned when he decided to kidnap Miranda was to uh, show her that he can give her all the things she ever wanted in life maybe and he just want to show her that sh he is there for her like I don't know what it is but it feels like you know he's trying to buy her heart a little bit because he he bought her things like you know example expensive books clothing providing her food and some other stuff as well like he was really really trying very hard to impress her but she just wasn't sway I think the story got a little bit interesting once you know Miranda starts to make you know plan a little bit here and there about her escape from Frederick captive like she to me I feel like she's a very strong uh, female female character 
like even though she's in that situation where she couldn't go out and scream out to ask for help because you know she's captive by this man she never really like give up she would always have something up to her sleeve i really like her i think Miranda is very strong female character but there's like some sort of social differences there somewhere like you know Miranda is very much you know an upper a little bit you know middle class woman like very educated has you know strong education she know how to talk to people she know how to mingle with them whereas Frederick on the other hand doesn't have a proper education and he was like kind of like a social outcast and it's very interesting to see these two very different characters and the, when they you know collide it's very interesting to see their banter you know because it's so you, you can sense that there is a difference there and I almost feel sorry for Frederick at some point I almost felt sorry for him but then, then my story turns into something else almost at the ending of the book when Miranda gets really really sick and then he didn't even try to bring her to hospital he doesn't even try to you know um, took her anywhere so she can get proper help and because of that because of his negligence, uh, Miranda died in the book. Spoiler alert. Miranda dies in the book. And I guess this is where my unforgettable moments comes into, you know, light. Like I said before, I supported Frederick, the main male character, in his decision. At first, because I thought that th that could be something here, I feel like, you know, there's a chance that it could be, you know, blossoms into something else. But the moment he decided to ignore Miranda's pleas to, you know, to took her to the hospital because she's very, very ill, I found it to be a little bit inhuman of him. If you love somebody, you don't do that to them, you know? If somebody gets sick, you try to help them, of course. But that wasn't the case with Frederick. He didn't do that. Yes, I know there's a point, uh, you know, there's a point in, in the book where Miranda just like frightening, you know, her sickness, but you know, throughout the end of the book, she is really, really sick. You know, any sane person would see, you know, if you're like, you know, um, pretending to be sick and if you're really, really sick, any normal sane person can see that. So it's clearly that Miranda is sick, but still Frederick choose not to do anything about it and just left her to die and I found that moment in the book so unforgettable <sighs> you claim you love somebody yet you do nothing to help them out like what kind of love you have here Frederick like I wanted to support you at first but what kind of love are you talking about here and what infuriates me even more about this book not saying I hate this book I love it it's just that this moment in the books really infuriates me and I just want to talk, talk about it is that shortly after Miranda's death are made permanent Frederick wastes no time to mourn her or anything of the sorts what infuriates me even more is that shortly after Miranda's death and his discovery of the diary um, he decided to choose another victim only this time that victim wouldn't be as as smart as Miranda or as great as she was it's going to be like a more timid version like you know the kind of girl that he can't mold and I found that part really infuriating like you are so disloyal Frederick I don't know I mean I feel almost like a complete idiot to even support you at the beginning of the book because you are so disloyal and I just couldn't tolerate that I just don't like disloyal people I thought that he really likes Miranda I, I really do until she, he left her to death and start finding somebody else I mean it's a person we're gonna see. It's quite weird to me that he been stalking this girl 
for I don't know maybe almost a year I think and you know the moment he had her and the moment he found the diary his attitude just like changed completely thrown out of the window and he wasn't feeling sorry when she died he was like I buried her and then start finding something somebody else I found that so insulting to Miranda's memory and I also find it very infuriating that he got away with murder like he killed this person this beautiful woman on purpose and yet he just like have the audacity to go out there and find another one. Oh my god I don't know what it is but even after reading this book I keep on thinking about the aftermath you know, especially when he said that he wants to find somebody else, you know, after Miranda. Like, I was kind of like, you know, trying to figure out, like, how is that going to turn out, you know? Because he disposes, I mean, it's clearly to me that he disposes his woman like he disposes his um, butterfly collection. When it's no longer pretty, he just get rid of them. Wow, you just don't do that to a person. You just don't. I just like, I just can't believe the characters does that. And I guess in one way or another, maybe this is what made this book so unforgettable to me. I just couldn't, I mean, even after reading it a couple of years back, I just couldn't forget about it. It's like, it has been emba embedded into my mind and it's very impossible for me to just erase it. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much uh, my first uh, video about my unforgettable books. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this little video I made. Um, yeah, see you soon on my next video, I guess. Ciao!